Secondly, the word for head beginning first, uh, Genesis, Rosh, is a rearrangement of the word for blessed, Asher. Okay, so that's another Hebrew connection. Now, let me get into things that you'll understand in English. It, in Psalm 1, we are told about the man who does, who, who does not walk in the path of the wicked or the counsel of the ungodly. Well, man is the height of God's creation in Genesis chapter 1 on the sixth day of creation. What does he create? Man. Secondly, we have the image of man walking. It says in verse 1, Blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, or stands in the way of sinners, or sits in the seat of the, of the scornful. So he's describing what not to do in life, and it takes us back to Genesis, because we know that man walked with God, that God would come into the garden in the cool of the day and walk with man. Next connection. Fifth connection. It says in verse 2 that this man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Right? And the first five books of Moses, starting with Genesis, they are considered the law of God. And so any Jew who is reading this or hearing this, it would say, they, they would hear that. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And what that meant to them is those first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, so it points them right back to Genesis. It says that this person, he meditates in God's law day and night. Well, how were the days created? What divided the first day from the second? The passing of day and night. So that's another connection to Genesis. Seventh connection. It says, He will be like a tree planted by streams of water, by rivers of water. We see trees in God's creation, and we see two prominent trees in the Garden of Eden. The, not, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and the tree of life. And we see trees all over the place as well, because God tells Adam, you can eat of any tree that's in the Garden. So, again, this takes us in a points us back to the garden. Eighth connection. It says that he'll be like a tree planted by rivers of water. We know that the Garden of Eden had four rivers running through it. That brings us again back to the Garden of Eden. Last connection. It says that this person who meditates in the law of the Lord day and night, he will be like that tree, and he brings forth his fruit in due season. And we know from Genesis 1, when God created, He created plant life in such a way that it would bring forth its fruit, and the seeds would be in it, so that the fruit can be eaten, and the seeds can reproduce more trees. So we have the imagery of the fruit. So all these things, they point us back to Genesis. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show you the connection between the first book of the Psalm, the first chapter of the Psalms and the first scenes of the Bible. It takes you and it puts you in the garden. That's what it's supposed to do. Next, I want to talk about the author of the book. I would say that the author of this psalm, now all these psalms had different authors. Probably a dozen different authors wrote the psalms. David wrote most of them. Almost every single one of the um, first 41 psalms, which make the first volume of the book of Psalms, were written by David. And if you look at them, you look at Psalm 3, 4, 5, all of them have a little subtitle before the psalm starts. It says the psalm of David. Now, Psalm 1 doesn't say that, and Psalm 2 doesn't say that, but I think that all the rest of them do. Maybe 9 or 10 might not say that. But Psalm 2, Peter, in the book of Acts in the New Testament, he says that this is what David wrote. So it's very possible that Psalm 1 was also written by David. And it's like the intro to the book. So almost all of the first book is attributed to David. Psalm 2 is attributed to David. We see David's writing style in it when he talks about, Blessed is the man. 
And he talks about delighting in the Lord. And he talks about those streams of water. We know that that comes from another one of his songs. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me beside peaceful streams. Where he says, blessed is the man whose transgressions are forgiven. Where he says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Those are all, that's all David's writing style. And we see it here in the first book of the Psalms. And we see the imagery of nature when it comes to like trees and streams and fruit in, in your leaf. That's David's writing style. And why is that important? We're going to share why that's important at, at the end. When we close, I'm going to tell you why it's important for you to know that David wrote this psalm. But let's look at the psalm. It says, Blessed is the man, verse 1, that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. I and mean, what, what he says, what he, what he means by blessed is the man, he means, oh how happy, oh how prosperous is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, the way of the sinners, or the seat of the scornful. And I want you to notice that there's a progression here between walking standing and sitting. Don't walk in the counsel of the wicked, don't stand in the way of sinners, and don't sit in the seat of the scornful. There's a progression. Because first, you're walking, right? You're walking in a good path, you're walking in a right path, and you get off course, you go a different way. You go on a path that you are not supposed to go on. It's the path of the wicked. So God says, blessed is man that does not walk in the path of of the wicked. And then it says that he does not stand in the way of sinners. So first, he's walking in their path. He's, he might have been on a good course. He gets diverted. He's, he's walked on the path of the wicked. Then he's standing with them. He's standing with them, learning from them, aligning himself with them, with the sinners. And then it says, finally, he sits in the seat of the scornful. He sits down with them. He dwells with them. He becomes one of them. And there's a definite progression. None of us wakes up one day and just out of nowhere say, well, my soul feels dry. I don't feel in love with the Lord as much today as I was yesterday. That does not happen. There is a progression that gets us off course in our relationship with God. It has to do with the fact that you're walking on the right path, you get off on the wrong path, you are allured by the wrong path to stand in its way, and then you become part of that wrong path. You walk, you stand, and then you sit where you dwell with the sinner. That's, there's always a progression. Always. So, God says, blessed is a man who does not do that. But rather, verse 2, it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. His delight is in the law of the Lord. What does this mean? It means the law, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That's what his delight is in. So those are the specific reference to the law of God, and the law of God also means the entirety of God's instruction. Everything that God tells you to do, and wants you to do, that is a law of God. And it says he, he's not ashamed of it. He says he delights in the law of the Lord. He delights. It is his joy. It is his pleasure. It is his happiness. He delights in the law of the Lord. A lot of us, we you know, we, we, we keep up with, with politics. We, we're all interested in this big race. Um, and it's always interesting to hear a politician talk about their faith, right? Because every politician is a Christian every four years, right? <laughs> and when you, hear, when you hear a question about their faith, right? Say, well, where do you go to church? And what is your religion? What does it mean to you? All of them... With, without almost no exceptions, they have a very nebulous answer, a very fluffy answer. So, well, my faith means a lot to me. My, my faith is very significant in my life. None of them have a solid answer. So here we have the sweet psalmist of Israel, who is the greatest king of Israel. The writer here, 
He says, his delight is in the law of the Lord. That's very specific. That he delights in everything that is written in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So you mean he delights in that story of Adam and Eve and the creation and the fall? You mean that he delights in all the ceremonial laws? You mean that he delights in those very specific, very rigid laws of God that separate the Israelites from the rest of the world? Yes, that is his delight. And why is it his delight? Because those things represent God's character. And so unashamedly, he's able to say in the intro to this book of the Psalms, blessed is the man. He doesn't do these things, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. And that is something very valuable in the word of life. The word of life, I don't know if you guys probably still hear this, but there would be a schedule where you get up, one of the first things you do is your quiet time. So that first thing you do out of bed, you put your mind, or you have an opportunity to put your mind on the things of Scripture. Before you go to bed at night, you have your devotions. So that you can go to bed thinking about the things of God. You wake, and, and it sets up bookends for the entirety of your day. You can wake up headed for a right path. That will guide you in everything that you do. You go to bed at night thinking about how God may have worked through that day in your life. You meditate on it day and night, and that is the delight, says this writer here. And, he's, and I want you to notice a couple of things. Notice that the wicked are described in terms of their interaction. That there's a path of the wicked, there's a Stand in, in, in the way of the sinners. You can sit in the seat of, scorn, of, of the scornful. There's an interaction that occurs between the wicked and with the wicked that are trying to influence us. But the righteous are not described in terms of their interaction. Primarily, they're described by their delight. That's a, that's a tough one, right? Because, say, you want to ask yourself, am I a good person? Am I right before the Lord? What do you delight in? What consumes you? Is it the things of God or is it all the other trash in our lives? What is your delight in life? And so the, those are opposite. Those are completely opposite. So you can't be living in the way of the wicked and say, okay, I want to be a righteous person. Let me add some good stuff to my life. It doesn't work like that. Can't be living a life of the wicked um, and say, I'm going to change my actions, I'm going to add some spiritual stuff to my life. You have to be transformed in a way that will cause you to delight in God. And that delight is an all consuming delight. It happens day and night. It is all consuming. It happens when you wake up, it happens when you go to bed at night, and everything in between is governed by that. Day and night. It says in verse 3, He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water. That's, that's the answer for the dry soul. Right? Being planted by rivers of water. It should be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So notice a couple things. Notice the might of the tree. It's a tree planted by rivers of water. It's not the kind of river that just comes in and just floods the whole land and destroys everything. It's a controlled stream that nourishes the tree. 